In the previous lesson, we've seen what kind of software and tools that we need to install in our local machine in order to make Laravel working properly. Now in this lesson, I'm going to show you how to set up the local development environment on window machine. If you are using Mac, you can skip the video and continue to the next one. So in this lesson, I'm going to show you how to install SAM, install Composer and Laravel installer, Install Node.js, install Git, and install Visual Studio Code. Alright, let's open up our browser. Then enter apachefriends.org. In this page, we can go to Download section, then choose the SUM for Windows. When I'm recording this video, the current PHP version is 7.3.12 and it may changing when you visit the page. Alright, let's hit this button. Then I'll hit save button to save the file. And the download process could be take a minute or so, depending on your internet speed. If you want to see more details about what packages are included in the sum and their versions, You can see in this green section, click here for other versions. In here, you can hit the what included link. Then here, you can see what packages are included. Apache 2.4.41, MoreDB 10, PHP 7.3, PHP MyAdmin, OpenSSL, and so on. Alright, the sum has been downloaded successfully. Now, let's hit the file to install it in our machine. Here we'll get a warning message like this. Just hit OK to continue. Installing sum is super easy, I think. Just follow the steps. We can hit next. Then here, we can customize which packages that we need to install. In the server section, I think we only need Apache and MySQL only, so we can uncheck other options. Let's hit next button. And here, you can specify the location where we're gonna install the sum. Here I'll put it in C. Hit next again. I don't want to learn about Bitnami. So I'll uncheck this option. Next again. OK, setup is now ready to begin installing SAM. Let's hit the next button again to proceed. This process could be take some time. So I'll come back once it's finished. Alright, here I get Windows Security Alert pop-up. The window firewall has blocked some features of Apache Surfer on public and private networks. Just keep the default option checked. Then hit the Allow Access button. OK, we've successfully installed SAM on our machine. Let's keep the check option being checked so that we can start the SAM control panel as soon as we hit the Finish button. Here we get Language window to choose the language. I'll choose English, then hit Yes button. In this window, we can fire up Apache and MySQL services by hitting the Start button. Once the service is running, it has green color indicator. OK, my Apache server now running. For now, we don't need to have MySQL servers running, so we don't need to touch the Start button. But when you're working with the database, just hit the button to make it running. Alright, now let's open up command windows. Then here, if we type php-v, here the PHP is still not recognized. This is because the PHP is not registered in our system. If we go to Window Explorer, then go to C, SAM, and then PHP folder, here we'll find the PHP binary. 
So, to execute the binary file in our command window, we need to go to C, SAM, PSP. So here, we need to CD two folders up, then CD, SAM, PSP. Now if we type PSP-V, here I have PSP 7.3.12 in the output. Obviously, we don't want doing this way over and over because it's a bit cumbersome to go to SAM, PSP to make the PSP working. So, to make our life much easier, we need to register the PSP path in the Windows environment variable. That way, we'll make the PSP binary accessible globally so that we can run PSP in all places. To do that, we can go to Start menu, then type NV. So here it is, added the system environment variables. And here we'll have System Properties Windows pop up. Let's hit the Environment Variables button. In this window, you can set the variable in user variable for user. This means the variable will be accessible only by user called user. If you set the variable in system variable section, then the variables will be accessible for all users. So if you have only a single user in your machine, then you can go to this section, then choose the path variable, hit edit, and specify the PSP path. Note that its value is separated by semicolon. To set the change, you can hit the OK button. Here, I'm gonna set the PSP path in the system variable. So I'll close this, choose the path, then hit the edit button. And here, I can add the PSP path by hitting the new button. Then I'll enter C colon sum PSP. I'll hit OK to save the change. Now here, we need to restart our command window to take effect the changes. Now, if we type php-v, OK, now we can run the PSP executable without need to go to the actual path. Now, let's navigate to Laravel official guide. Then here, let's search the server requirements. So if you're using Homestead, all requirements are met. But since we're not using it, we need to make sure that the server requirements listed here are met. We have PSP 7.3 installed in our machine. So here we need to verify that these PHP extensions has been properly set up in our system. So to do that, we can open new tab, then enter localhost, Then go to PSP Info menu. So the PSP extensions that we need to verify are BCMath, CType, JSON, MBString, OpenSSL, PDO, Tokenizer, and XML. Here we can hit Ctrl F, then search the extension. PCMath. OK, the extension is active. CTIFE. OK, JSON. OK, MB string. It's active. Then open SSL. OK, it's active. PDO. OK, tokenizer, it's active, plus XML. OK, great. All server requirements are met. So now we can continue to the next steps. Install Composer and Laravel Installer.
Let's enter gitcompulsor.org. Then hit the download button to go to the download page. For Windows, we can hit the compulsor setup exe. Hit save to actually download the file. Alright, let's hit the installer file to install the compulsor in our machine. Let's choose the recommended option. Then hit next button. Here the PSP binary path has been detected. C, SAM, PSP, PSPXA. If you might have multiple PSP versions, you can select it by hitting the Browse button. Hit Next again. We can ignore the proxy, just hit Next. And now we can hit the Install button to actually install the Compulsor in our local machine. Once it's done, you can read this information carefully. Hit next again. And finally, we have successfully installed our compulsor in our machine. We can hit the finish button. Now we can go to our command window. And in order to make the compulsor recognized in here, we need to restart our command window. Now, if we type compulsor, Okay, here we get a list of commands that Compulsor provides. This means the Compulsor has been properly set up in our system. Just in case you didn't find something like this, you might restart your computer in order to make the Compulsor get added to the environment variable. Or if you type echo path, you should have the path for the Compulsor. So if you cannot find something like this, you can do that manually in the environment variables like we did before. Alright, we've successfully set up Compulsor in our machine. The next thing that we could do is install a Laravel installer. As I mentioned before, that Laravel installer is a Compulsor package that is used to easily create our new Laravel project. To install it, we can run this command compulsor global require laravel installer. Copy the code, then paste in the command window. To paste the code here, you can simply right click your mouse. Okay, while it's doing its things, let me show you how to create a laravel project. If you didn't install laravel installer, you can create new laravel project by using compulsor command. Compulsor Create project, prefer dist, laravel, laravel, and specify the project name. But if you have laravel installer installed on your machine, you can do that more simpler. You can say laravel new, then specify the project name. For example, blog. Alright, laravel installer has been installed successfully. Now let's go back to our browser. And the next thing that you could do is to install Node.js. Enter Node.js.org. Then here, you can choose the download package for your system. When I'm recording this video, the LTS version is 12.14.0, and the current version is 13.5.0. Which one you install, I think it doesn't matter. Just hit the package. Once it's done, you can install it by hitting the installer file. I'm sure the installation process is very easy. The next thing that you could do is to install git for windows. Just type git for windows. Hit this link. You can hit the window option to download a package. Once it's done, you can then install it. Last, you could install Visual Studio Code by entering this code. Then here we can hit this link. When I'm recording this video, the current version is 1.41 and it may change when you visit the page. Just hit the download button. Once it's finished, 
You can then install it on your machine. Alright, we've successfully set up our local development environment in our machine. We can now finally start coding with Laravel.